Well, this was a big day for patents being uh, revealed by various people. And if you go on X, you can track these down. And maybe you're interested in really looking into the details of all these. But let me just start with the one that probably is the most immediately interesting. It appears that, according to Tesla Roddy, it appears that Tesla plans to utilize a wireless charging pad for the RoboTaxi suite. And that, he says, makes sense. If the vehicle is going to lack any sort of true human operation and be uh, autonomous past the point of driving, it needs to be self-sufficient with charging as well. So pulling into a garage or other structure with a wireless charging pad on the floor, as long as the vehicle also has an induction coil, would eliminate the need for humans to come out, plug the vehicle in. Of course, we've looked at the possibilities of some kind of a snake. You guys have all seen this probably. Uh, we've certainly talked about the idea that Optimus could do this at some point. But this uh, you know, induction coil could be the way to get it done. Then from this, uh, this is from, uh, Ad I'm sorry, from Alex. He says uh, Tesla has a patent about creating a road roughness map associated with the geographic area and therefore preemptively adjusting the vehicle suspension to reduce the effects of said road roughness. I think I heard a little nibble about this earlier. Also, there were patents today showing the unboxed process, showing how the cars divided into different sections and what those sections re would represent. Again, I didn't get into the weeds at all on that one, but maybe that's something you want to look up. And then also their electric wiring approach where it's a plug and play instead of having this harness that goes all over the car. Uh, it's uh, you know plugging into various sections of the car with a central control. So four different uh, patents for today. That's, that's uh, maybe a record. All right, then Elon Musk is saying this. He says today, this first Starship to Mars will launch in two years when the next Earth-Mars transfer window opens. This one will be uncrewed in order to test the reliability of the landing to be intact on Mars. And if those landings go well, then the first crewed flights to Mars will be in four years. He says the flight rate will go grow exponentially from there with the goal of building a self-sustaining city in about 20 years. Being multiplanetary will vastly increase the probable lifespan of consciousness, and we will no longer have all our eggs, literally and metabolically, on one planet. Well, we'll see about that two-year uh, idea. He was originally, I think, believing he would have gotten his first uh, uh, starship off in uh, 2022. Um, maybe even earlier than that, if I can't, I can't really remember all the details, but I think 2022 was the original plan, but hey, we'll take 2026. That's fine. Um, all right. Then uh, on the FSD front, lots and lots of people today with uh, great videos out talking about a fantastic FSD uh, 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 5.2.3, 5 5 I'm sorry. It's, uh, it's gone out of my brain right now, but you know what I'm talking about, 12 point, <laughs> five point, it's so many points. Anyway, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, on so on your uh, level four, your hardware four, uh, or AI four as they're calling it now, works great. Black Tesla says, and he's an honest, honest critic, and he's unafraid to, see, to tell you exactly how he sees it. He says that the uh, of this new release, he says, consistency and predictability is how FSD will earn the people's trust, outstanding work. He also says, though, of Hardware 3, still needs some work. That seems to be the general consensus out there. Okay, this from the Daily Caller, when we, we're getting back now into the general economy, it says the U.S. economy lost hundreds of thousands of full-time jobs in August in a shift that suggests the U.S. is hemorrhaging higher-paying pay, higher jobs. The country lost 438,000 full-time jobs in August, with the month's net growth coming entirely from gains in part-time employment, according to the Bureau of, Labor, Bureau of Labor Statistics with data that they released yesterday. The number of part-time jobs rose 527,000 in August, while the number of people who have preferred full-time employment but were forced to settle for part-time work rose from 4.2 million the previous month to 4.8 million year over year. He says employers have been shedding full-time jobs because of lackluster demand and increased uncertainty. This is a very common behavior by firms as the economy heads into recession. That's according to our own E.J. Antoni, a regular on uh, on X and a research fellow at the Heritage Foundation, Grover H. 
Herman Center for the Federal Budget. The Biden-Harris administration has turned the American labor market into a temp agency, he says. All of the net job growth in August was part-time employment, while full-time jobs plummeted, were hemorrhaging higher payer jobs with benefits, and replacing them with multiple part-time jobs. And these higher payroll numbers are a sign of impoverishment, not growth. Year over year, the U.S. lost 1.02 million full-time jobs, while adding 1.06 million part-time jobs, according to the VLS data. The shift suggests the quality of available jobs is declining as part-time employees typically receive lower salaries, fewer benefits, and less overtime pay. The Biden administration touted, this is now me speaking, the Biden administration touted its job creation record in a press release Friday following the release of the BLS data. He said uh, they were just so thankful that they've been able to create 16 million new jobs on, on their watch. Well, you know what? I went and did a lot of research on this, and about of that 16 billion jobs that were added, at least 4 billion of those were added in the first six months of the administration. Any honest analysis would give those jobs to the prior administration. administration. I'll be happy to do the same for the Trump first six months of their administration when we're analyzing this uh, four years from now. And Janet Yellen was out this afternoon, just, just breaking, just now. She says she does not see any red lights flashing. <laughs> okay, I'm going to tell you about all these videos that you need to go watch. If you want to see some red lights flashing, like everything from the last week would be one place to start. But try the Beige Book. That would be a really good one to start with, say, on Tuesday afternoon, the video that we did. I think that was either Tuesday afternoon or or Wednesday afternoon, I guess Wednesday afternoon. Anyway, the Beige Book, it was like a horror show. Um, but and Janet Yellen says uh, she's thinking it's going to be a soft landing. All good. Don't worry about it. Labor numbers, oh, well, you know, it's not that bad. <laughs> anyway, here's, I'm going to, but I am going to put up three videos right now. I'm going to put up three cards for one each for these three videos because you really do need to go back and check these out if you haven't already. Probably maybe the most important one or two are the CERN Basher videos. They've been getting an amazing amount of commentary on X since they were released. One of those was Friday. I'll put that card up there, but you may want to go back and take a look at the Thursday one also. Lots and lots of data about Tesla, about their, uh, uh, the full range of energy and every, so many different things that we talked about there. Outstanding commentary, outstanding data. Then last night, Larry and I went into great depth about that jobs report yesterday and what it really means. Here were some additions. These were addition to last night and even additions to this morning where we had the Kathy Wood show, where we talk about Kathy Wood's report that came out last night. Once a month, she comes out on uh, Employment Friday. She gives an update on the monetary, the stock market goes right down the line with all the different aspects of the economy. And uh, Larry and I then take that and we spent over an hour today going over what Kathy said, adding our take, adding more depth, um, because, you know, she can't do uh, the, she can't go into every single subject with a lot of depth. So uh, Larry and I add a lot of nuance and, and, and depth to what Kathy is giving in general. Anyway, I'm just going to recommend all three of those. They may not be in the right order. I don't always get the order right, but um, they'll all three be up there for you to look at. So uh, this would be a good time to hit like if you haven't already. Hit subscribe, hit notify. Tomorrow we will have our regular programming on Sunday night. Tomorrow morning, I'm thinking about doing a, a, a show that I'm going to call Quarter 3 2025. And it's going to look at what, what might Tesla be doing in Quarter 3 a year from now. What would, what, I, you know, October's report a year from now, what might that report look like? I kind of worked it out. I might do that uh, sometime tomorrow. I'm also thinking about doing one where I respond to your comments and your thoughts and your questions uh, from the various videos over the last few days. So leave them right now. If you want a, if you want a good shot at me responding to one of your specific comments, that'd be a great thing to handle right this minute. All right. It's been, I uh, hope you're having a great weekend. Lots of football tomorrow and it's been great talking to you.